Dear brothers and sisters, we live in a world where truth has become known as falsehood. And falsehood has become known as truth. The liar is known as the truthful one, and the truthful one is known as the liar. And we don't know what's going on anymore. The world is in utter confusion. And I want to bring up something that even though it might not necessarily be point blank on the subject at hand, but it is the subject at hand today. And I could not give my first lecture since these incidences and not mention it. There's just no way. And it's very it's very nostalgic that the last the first time I was here there was something very similar <laughs> happening. Anyone who's seen that lecture from 2007. There have been some confusion going on in the Muslim world. And this is part of our purification. We have to understand this concept. We have to understand how to deal with things. There has been some confusion going on in the Muslim world about how to handle the recent incidences of blatant misrepresentation, lies, and slanders against our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And as I said before, in 2007, when the Danish cartoons came out, there have been some good reactions, there have been some bad reactions, and there have been some overreactions. But at the end of the day, and I'm speaking this mostly to our guests, you have to understand the relationship that the Muslim has with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You have to understand this. The non-Muslims have to understand this because if they don't ever even try to look at it from this point of view, they will never understand our reaction. You'll never get it if you don't grasp it like this. And I'm repeating my words from 2007. We as Muslims are taught to love the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, more than we love our own mother, more than we love our own father, more than we love our own soul. Because he gave to us this beautiful way of life. Without him, there is no us. He was the first of us. Meaning that he came at a time where there were no Muslims. There were no people worshiping Allah alone with Tawheed properly. He is the beginning of all of this. And we are taught to love him more than we love our own soul. And if someone were to come up and insult you in public, or insult your mother, and call her the worst names, call her the worst things in front of everyone in this room, you would boil inside. And anyone who says they would not boil inside is fooling no one but themselves, you would boil inside if you had any type of relationship with your mother. You would boil. And your immediate reaction would be to respond. And your immediate response might not probably be the wisest response if you had time to calm down and think about your response or think about your reaction. You might react with emotion. You might get angry. And you might let that anger overspill into how you behave. And that is something no one would blame you for. That is why there is a stipulation within the criminal courts of America called crimes of passion. Crimes where a person becomes so overwhelmed with passion or anger or jealousness where they don't think correctly. And that is taken into account within even the criminal law of America and many other Western societies because you're not in your right state of mind. When these, and I do, have never even seen the movie. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm not gonna go watch it. We'll never watch it. Didn't look at the first cartoons, avoided them by all means necessary because I will not allow the people who perpetrated these things to do what they want to do. They want you to watch them. Why do you think they're there? Do you think they're there so the non-Muslims can see them? They're there for you to watch them. So every click you have given them has just solidified their whole purpose. Don't watch it if you haven't seen it yet. If so, go make some repentance. But Muslims have become angry. And we have overreacted. We've done some 
things that I would say probably are outside of the way Islam would teach us to respond to this. But I understand the emotion. I understand the anger. I understand it because we live in a world where we're being put through so much. This is one thing that is highly sanctified. You can call me everything you want to call me, but don't talk about my mother. And as a Muslim, you can call me whatever you want to call me. You can call me a rag head, a towel head, a camel jockey, whatever you want to call me. Tell me where I go back, where I came from, which I'm telling you right now that I only live a little ways from here, so it's not far that I have to go. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I can deal with that. But don't talk about the greatest human beings that walk the face of the earth. That's where I will draw the line. Because you're talking about something you don't know. And your ignorance is only showing through. Because if you were to know the man that you're speaking about, your own lips couldn't formulate the words that you're trying to put out. It just couldn't happen. So, at the end of the day, I understand it, but I have to be just. That Islam teaches everything in moderation. Everything. Everything. We're not allowed to go to the extreme in anything. Nothing. There is not one single thing in Islam that you can be extreme in, except for your love, for your Creator, and your love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. No limits on that. No lim No limits on that, unless it causes you to commit an injustice. Unless it causes you to commit an injustice. We need to take the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in these times, because we can't say that we're defending the greatest human being on the face of the earth by responding to things that he himself dealt with in a way that he didn't deal with them. We can't, we can't get away with it. And I am not a person that will hold my tongue even against Muslims. Because if I can't tell you the truth, then I don't have any business doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Because Allah says, Ya yuhaladina amanu, ta'ullaha wa qulu qawin salina. Oh you who believe, Fear your Lord and always say what is right. Always say what is right. No matter, even if it's against my own self. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, dealt with slander himself. He was slandered. He was called a madman. He was called a magician. He was called a sorcerer. He was called things that I would not even repeat in public. He had camel guts thrown on him when he was praying. He had a Jewish woman who used to throw trash on his doorstep every single morning. He was beaten by his uncle every single day when he used to go to the markets. His uncle Abu Lahab would chase him down to the markets, beating him and pelting him with stone. He dealt with the harshest treatment from his own family members, his own kinsmen, his own town. And how did he deal with them? How did he respond to these incidences? And I'm only going to give you one. I'm only going to give you one that should clearly sum this up. And this shows you a human being who had his own soul in check. A human being that had his whole soul in check. There was a Jewish woman who used to drop trash. How many of you know this story? Raise your hands. Good. So take some advice. There was a Jewish woman, and for those who say that you know Muslims and Jews can't coexist, we have a long history of coexisting. There was a Jewish woman who used to drop trash. She used to take her trash and drop it on his doorstep. Every single morning he would come out of his door to trash and have to clean it up every single morning. Is there anyone here that does this every morning? Is there anyone here who their neighbor drops trash on the door every single morning? Didn't think so. And every morning he would clean it up and go on about his business. Wouldn't even say anything. Would not say a word. One morning he came out, there was no trash on his door. No trash on his door. So he was worried. So what did he do? He inquired about the woman. He asked what happened to this woman. And someone told him she is sick. She's very ill. Now, most of our response, most of our responses in that situation would have been Alhamdulillah, that she died today. Just be real with yourself. You would be overjoyed with the fact that there's no more trash on my door. I don't care how it's not there anymore. She gets run over by a bus and drives 30 miles, we don't really care. But a person who was sent, as he is described, Rahmatul Lil Alameen, a mercy to mankind, he went to the woman's door, knocked on the door and asked for permission to enter. And when he entered, 
His only question was to see how she was. He only showed her genuine concern that he was concerned for her well-being. This is a person whose care for humanity overcame everything else. His genuine care for human beings overcame even his own personal preferences, his own hardships, his own difficulties. Humanity came first. Muslim, non-Muslim, Jew, Christian, atheist, Buddhist, it did not matter. These were human beings that were created in the same fashion that he was created and this is how he viewed them. And they were all potential for success. Everyone was a potential success. So he knocked on her door and inquired about her well-being. And when the woman saw his genuine concern for the man that she put garbage on his door every single day, she was overcome. She was overcome with this generosity and this concern that maybe nobody else had come. Maybe her own family hadn't come, but this man is at my door asking how I am. So what did she do? She accepted Islam. She accepted the message that he was presenting because she saw very clearly that this is a man who is on truth. This is a man who is following something much greater than what I or anybody else has. So she accepted Islam at his hand. And if I were to tell you the number of incidences that happened just like this, I would keep you here for hours and hours on end. Hours and hours on end. And I'm not telling you something that I heard through third person narration, heard from so and so, from this and that. We have verified chains of authenticity to prove every single one of them. Or else I would not say them. This is the response that the Muslims need to have. There was once the daughter of the Prophet His own daughter was walking by the notables of Quraysh. And I know I said I was going to give you one, but I don't want you to leave here thinking, oh, that was a, 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 a single incident. That was a coincidence. That was just a, a, a single incident. The daughter of the Prophet, peace be upon him, she was walking by the notables of Quraysh one day and they were calling, they were calling her father <laughs> the insulted one. <coughs> they were calling her father, basically the best translation is the insulted one. The one who has no honor, he is an insult. And that hurt her very much. That hurt her very much. And she went home and started to cry. And when her father, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, came home, he asked her, why are you crying? She said, Father, you are the messenger of Allah. You are the one sent to us by Allah. The best of us, the purest of us, the most noble of us. Allah verifies in the Quran, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَالَ خُلْقٍ عَظِيمٍ You are upon the most noble character. And they are calling you the insulted one. Do you know what his response was? My dear daughter, they are calling me something. And Allah has named me Muhammad, the praised one. So I don't know who they are talking about. They must be referring to someone else. <laughs> this was his simple response to his daughter. That the person they're talking about is not me. The person who they're talking about in this cartoon is not the Prophet Muhammad that I know. So how could I sit here and tell you this is an insult against the Prophet ﷺ? Because they're talking about someone totally different. They're talking about some fictional character that they've made up. It is not the man who taught me Islam. It is not the person who is referred to in the Quran. It is not the person whose seerah I have read about for 14, almost 14 years. They have made up some fictional character and called him Muhammad, and I'm supposed to get angry over that? For what? For what reason? Oh, they were intending to insult you. Won't be the first time and will not be the last. So we need to put things in their proper place. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said there is a time for this and there is a time for that. There is a time for this and a time for that. We live in a world right now where we don't have the position and place to put our foot down. You have to understand that. Live in reality, brothers and sisters. We don't have the position or the place to put our foot down. And the world knows this very well. 
The one that knows this very well. So they're going to push, and they're going to poke, and they're going to prod, and they're going to antagonize, and they're going to instigate, and they're going to do all of these things. Because they want you to act the way they have already portrayed you. They want to push you into acting in a way that they have already built you up to be. And when we respond with the exact response that they want, we verify the exact statements they're putting out. We give them what they want. We lose. We lose. Every single time, and we don't see it. We think that we are showing them